Howdy everyone, Pete Daddy here. It's Friday and that means we've got another player objective card to grind for. This one is Bundesliga League player Daily St. Graven, and he looks like a really strong left back. In fact, he's got some bagels. We got bagels! Whoa! So we are going to go over the best way, the fastest way. I'm going to share with you the team I'm going to use to take this challenge down. But before we begin, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. So this one has five different parts. And the first one is where the whole grind comes in. Bundesliga wins. Went 15 matches using only Bundesliga players in the starting 11 and the live foot friendly managerial masterpiece. So we're back in managerial masterpiece, which is the one where you can only have a 77 squad rating. So you really have to pick and choose what you want to take in. And like I said, I'll share with you the team I'm going to use. But there is one thing I want to point out. This season, of, this is for a season card. So we have 27 days. If you look in the top right, this one will ex will expire at the end of season three. 27 days, 21 hours. However, there is one potential problem, but I'm assuming EA will fix this. Managerial Masterpiece only has six days and 21 hours left. So they have re-upped it once before, but they didn't wait for it to go all the way down to zero when they did it last time. So I'm assuming they will fix it, but you just never know with EA. I just wanted to point that out, that that could be a potential problem or something you want to keep an eye out for. But the first objective is pretty straightforward. But I will say that gives us an opportunity to help each other out. If you fall behind, there's no like playing matches on this one. So if you fall behind 2-0 early, then just leave. You know, there's no point in just trying to grind it out, trying to make a comeback in the 90th minute. Just leave. Try again. Let's just help each other out on this one. We really can't play golden goal based on some of the other objectives. But I would say if you're down two goals, just leave. Just get it over with. Because like I said, you some of the other ones, you have to win four matches but play 10 so maybe it makes sense to just kind of stick around this one is one where you just play to win 15 matches so let's just help each other out make this as easy as possible and that gets to the next one score 30 goals using Bundesliga players and honestly over the 15 matches you should not have any problems getting the the 30 goals because you know like I said as long as people aren't leaving after one goal if you score two goals per game with your Bundesliga players that's going to be your 30 goals and the next one is, is going to fall right in line assist 20 goals with Bundesliga, Bundesliga players the only thing I'll point out just to be cautious of I know a lot of you like to bring in loan Maradona are lone Mbappe. Remember, they're not Bundesliga, so if you're banging in all your goals with Mbappe, and sometimes I see this, people will bring on lone Mbappe, score a hat trick with lone Mbappe, but they don't score with anyone else. So that if unless they've already completed this or working towards it, then that may hurt them, make it take a little bit longer to complete some of that type of stuff. So just keep that in mind. You want to make sure you're getting goals and assists with Bundesliga players. Then we get into one. This is probably the hardest one of, of them all, but it's not the worst in the world. It's just it can be frustrating. Sometimes it seems like you send in a cross that has no chance and someone gets on the end of it and bangs it in and you're like, oh my gosh, crosses are amazing. Then you can have 15 crosses that seem like perfect crossing scenarios. The person on the other end of the ball is right there wide open and they head it over the goal. They head it wide of the goal. So it's just there's no consistent way. Probably the best way for me is low driven crosses. And that's basically if you're making a run with like your right winger and left winger and say you're dribbling up with your right winger and they do a low driven cross, which low driven cross would be holding the RB or R1 button and then powering up your cross. You want to get a pretty good power, you know, three, four bars of power on that, get a good bit of power on it. And then on the other end, they'll just kind of volley it in. That's probably the most consistent way for me. Usually what happens for me on these though, is say if I'm up two or three goals late, I just start hoofing and crosses, hoping somebody gets on the end of one of them. But you will get it, just, just keep it in mind. It's one of those things, just don't play for, you know, 10 matches and be like, oh yeah, I've got to get crosses. And then you're kind of in a pickle because you have to get four Matt you have to win five, but in four of those wins, you need crosses in those games. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you're getting your crosses. Worst case scenario, message your opponent before the match. Say, hey, can we trade crosses? I'll give you a cross. You give me a cross, and then we'll just play and, and see what happens if you're having any trouble doing that. But like I said, over the 15 matches, I'm sure we'll be able to do it as long as we just think of it. And that's the same thing on this next one. Score a finesse goal using Bundesliga players in six separate matches. This one is not really a problem. It's just I hardly ever think to do finesse goals out except for certain scenarios if i've got in the finesse to do a finesse shot it's also holding rb or r1 but this time you'll hit the shoot button and that kind of does that like side foot animation where they'll kind of try to curve it around the keeper
keeper basically and this works perfectly it's just a lot of times if i'm in that spot where a finesse shot would work or a power shot would work i generally just opt for the power shot so it's just one of those you got to just keep in your mind oh yeah i need a finesse shot oh yeah i need a finesse shot and so when you're in that good scoring position just make sure you're hitting that finesse shot modifier and it will count as a finesse goal it doesn't have to be that one you know you're kind of like on the edge of the box and then just do that beautiful like normal finesse shot it can be like even if you're three inches from the keeper and you do that finesse shot modifier it will still count as a finesse goal so let me share with you the team I am going to use to take this challenge down. And I didn't opt for any just super attackers. You know, it kind of just goes but with the flow based on what is in each individual league. I kind of tend to like to have my best players spread out. I like to have it good all over the pitch. Now, if this was one where we could play golden goal, I would maybe say, yeah, you want to get somebody really strong in the team. But this is what I'm recommending up top. And I'll probably what I will do is I'll probably put Leon Bailey up top. Leon Bailey is a phenomenal card, 94 pace. He's got four star, four star, high low work rates, very quick, pretty good agility. You know, you could put a finisher on him if you really wanted to boost his agility and his shooting. His pace is already pretty strong, but I'll probably make him one of my strikers. And then probably also Honky Chan. Now, Honky Chan is the starter team legend. I've got this once to watch card. You can just get his regular gold card. It's an identical card. I just happen to have completed this Huang Ki Chan at the beginning of the year, so I still have his once to watch card. So these two will probably be my strikers. I potentially could make Bellarabi a striker, but I may just play him and Rashika as kind of my wingers. And I do recommend this formation, a 4-4-2 second variation. I have a tactics video on my channel if you want to know the tactics I'm going to use. But I think these are four fairly strong attackers. And again, we're not talking about anyone. Like, you don't have to have Lewandowski. I just want some pace to where I can abuse some of the people because you got to remember when you go into this managerial masterpiece, a lot of people just put whatever they have in their team. So instead of having a, key, a center back like Klosterman, they're going to have, let, let's just see what we have available here from the Bundesliga. I may not have much. I've been in save and pack mode for project team of the year. Uh, let's just see. Maybe they use this LVD or maybe Boyata or something. And you can see there, they, they don't, I mean, they're not bad, but I'm just saying that they're not, some people just put center backs out there that don't have the greatest of pace. So this definitely makes it a lot easier when you have some players like this. And in the midfield, I really like this Malonga card for a 76 rating. And again, you have to t make some sacrifices when you're trying to get a 77 rated squad. So Malong is very physical. See, they're 85 strength, solid defensive awareness, solid pace. He's a, not the most agile player, but again, you've got to make a few sacrifices when you're trying to hit that 77 rating. And to pair with him, I'm going to have this Conrad Limer. I really like this card, a managerial masterpiece. We've used him several times for different manager masterpiece scenarios I use him as my box-to-box -box midfielder has amazing pace great defending so he's going to help support the attack but he's got the pace to get back and help you on defense a really strong link up player but I do want to point out that we do have I generally play these like try to optimize these as much as possible but there is a little bit of room if you're someone who has Zakaria and maybe wants a little bit more defending you can bring Zakaria on but I'll show you how optimized this is if we try to bring Lime and go from 81 Davies to 82 Limer. We do, you see there in the top left, we go to a 70, uh, 78 rating. I actually prefer Limer to Zakaria, but I wanted to point that out that if, if you wanted to make that change, Limer is one that would be great for this CDM destroyer role, but we're going to go with Limer so I can have a little bit more support and attack. For my back line, we're going to have a really strong back line. And that's one of the things you got to remember, too. You're going to go up against a lot of people bringing in Lone Mbappe, Lone Maradona. So if you just throw whatever into your back line, you're going to get destroyed by even that one player. So here, I think Klosterman is just is perfect for someone like for something like managerial masterpiece. 80 rating, 84 pace, great defending. Alfonso Davies is another one. You could even, if you have any problems or don't have pace elsewhere, you could even move Alfonso Davies up to the wing. Obviously, you wouldn't want Leon Bailey playing left back. I'm just saying that you could switch it in game to where Alfonso Davies is playing wing for you. He doesn't have great shooting, but I mean, still, this year, if you get someone in great position, they're going to be able to bang in some type of goal. You could still, if you were good playing and on playing them at attack, you could put some type of finisher on them. I'm just saying just for an 81 rating, you're getting a lot out of Alfonso Davies. 
Same thing with Upa Meccano. And I'll point this out, like some of these cars may be a little pricier right now. They tend to kind of rise in value when, when these objectives first come out, but then they'll kind of come back down. So if you're not going to complete it for a few days and don't worry about buying anyone else into your team, just wait a few days, wait for some of these to come back. And then this Mbabu card is absolutely exceptional for a 79 rating. Look at this with his shadow. I think I had him in one of my starter teams or I did something with him, but with his shadow, he goes to 99 acceleration, 99 sprint speed which is amazing for a managerial masterpiece scenario. So a great, great card to have. As far as keepers go, I just tend to look for, for height because if they're just going to be a cardboard cutout back there, I want them to take up as much cardboard as possible. So this Flecken is six foot five, so just works very great for a 75 rating. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I get this question every time after these videos. They're like, Pete, I put this team together and it says it's 80 rated. Make sure you fill out your subs bench. You're allowed to have three silvers in this, so you can't have any bronzes, but you can have three silvers. So on your subs bench, put three 65 rated silvers. And then for your gold, put a couple nice subs, like this carrot card is really strong. Opara is really nice. So, you know, if you don't want to buy Upa Meccano, if you've got like a cheap gold Bundesliga center back, Put him out there, sub on Opara. Opara is going to be exceptional as a super sub in this role too if you want to do that. Also, some of these lower rated players, like I don't remember for sure, but some of them do. Like Juan Ki Chan right there, 74 stamina. If you're running them, making them make runs the whole match, he may get a little tired. So then if you have someone like Carrick with 93 pace to bring on, that's going to be nice to help out. And then I like having a nice left back or right back, somebody that's pretty versatile like this Mojica I could bring in in the midfield if Malong gets tired I'll probably just ride Limer because some of my better players I just ride them until they're you know this much stamina if you have to but that that's basically what I look at and then this is the prize of what we're playing for this St. Graven right here now he's a really strong card there's only like one thing that I'm not in love with and that is his strength of 70 but it's not uncommon this year most of our fullbacks it seems like they've kind of been downgraded in strength I just sometimes prefer a little bit more strength you could certainly put an anchor on this card and make a 96 acceleration 96 sprint speed boost his defending and boost his strength that would probably be the best uh, best chem style you could put on them but i i wouldn't even fault you if you put a shadow on them and if you guys have been watching me for a while know how much or know how much i value pace i mean it just makes things so much easier so if you put a shadow on them makes them 99 acceleration 99 sprint speed does not boost any of his physical so that's why i'm saying anchor is probably still the best but i, I couldn't fault anyone for putting a shadow on them but look at that agility, 92 agility. His dribbling is exceptional. So if you get the ball on St. Graven's boots, he's going to be able to move with it. He's got good passing. If you look at his passing stats, his passing stats are phenomenal for a left back. I mean, now the gold standard for Bundesliga left backs has been Alfonso Davies. And if you compare the two, now, of course, Davies has the pace. But the shooting for St. Graven is better. The passing is miles better. So 69, going from 69 passing Alfonso Davies to 83 passing St. Graven. 82 dribbling to 88 dribbling. 76 defending to 82 defending. So if you're looking for a Bundesliga left back, this St. Graven card would be really strong. The other thing is he is Dutch. So we've kind of had this influx of strong Dutch cards into the game with Malin and Kleiber and the Bundesliga squad foundations with Van Bergen and Grebenberch and Baumgartel. I mean, well, Baumgartel's not Dutch, but you know the others are. And Robin. And there's a Quincy Promise. So Road to the Finals, I think that one is. You have so many promos, it's hard to keep up with all of them. Or if you want to pair them with Virgil van Dijk or with Wijnaldum, you know, so they give you some more options. We've just been getting a lot of strong Dutch players lately. So he's going to be able to bring a lot of nice links into your team. It's a nice, nice card in, a, in an area where he could really use some improvement because you could also potentially play St. Graven and uh, you know and maybe as a winger now he doesn't quite have the shooting but he's got really good passing really good dribbling you could potentially put him in the midfield I'd maybe like a little more strength on him but that dribbling is going to allow him to move around the pitch really nicely but it's a really really strong car and I definitely recommend completing it but this is going to wrap it up for now if you have any questions leave me a comment down below but definitely subscribe also check the description join my discord but I We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.